Hi everybody and welcome! In today's video I'm going to give you an update on my book journey. As many of you may know by now, so I'm writing a book uh, on AI audio. And so with this video I intend to give you like a little bit of an update about like what I've done, some of the things that I thought like during like my write-up process. And so yeah, let me get started with like what I did. So. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I finished uh, the first draft of the preface of the book and I also implemented most of the comments that I got uh, from my uh, beta uh, readers. And last week, I worked on the chapter on uh, linear algebra. So this is an introductory chapter that gives you an overview of things like vectors, matrices, matrix operations all of these kind of things. So I managed to go like, uh, to basically like finish the uh, chapter, but I'm gonna take this week to massage it into a shape that's releasable like, to the beta uh, uh, readership so that I can get like feedback from them. So uh, I'm gonna be a little bit busy this week. And so I'll probably take like all of this week to like finalize the this chapter and to and as I said, like to improve it to a point where I feel, yeah, this is ready to be reviewed by the beta uh, readers. Now, uh, talking about time, this is a big thing that is hitting me uh, now while I'm like writing up like this book. And the problem is like managing time while you write a book. Now, this isn't obviously only something that you would think about if you're writing a book, but it's the same thing like if you have a YouTube channel or if you like create any type of content that's on top of your like working hours, right? And so and in my case, obviously I have to find a balance between uh, saving time to write up uh, the book creating content for my YouTube channel and it's a couple of videos every week. So it's quite intense. And then obviously uh, doing like my normal work. So I feel like I'm really busy, but I found a uh, kind of like process that works really well for me. So what I do is I organize my uh, day in a very structured manner. So during the morning, I do a lot of work like programming and just like work that pays the bills. And then like in the afternoon, I would spend some time uh, doing like work for uh, like my YouTube channel. So creating uh, like videos or creating like code like, and uh, slides for the videos. And then during the evening, nighttime, I would start like writing up. So, and the key here is just like to time lock uh, what you do. So I would usually uh, time lock two to four hours to the write up process. And if you don't do that, I found with myself that it's difficult just like to be consistent and keep writing a little bit like every uh, day. Now, in my case, like in the night is the perfect moment to write because I really love like nighttime because like, first of all, I'm a night owl. And then I really love like when there's not much like chaos and I can just like focus completely like on the book and I'm writing. So, uh, yeah, this is like a key thing, like managing your time, scheduling your time, like is really, really important when you embark on a journey as complex as writing a book. Now, I want to talk about the feedback that it got uh, from my beta readers. And if you guys uh, watching don't know, I have a beta reader group. We have a Slack workspace that's dedicated to to my book and what I do is I release uh, the chapters once I like write them and then like people can comment on the chapters they can also like comment the table of contents as I like uh, release it so they can add ask to add more topics or like uh, remove others so the cool thing about uh, feedback is that not only it gives you like great like technical um, I mean, suggestions, but also it is great for uh, knowing your readership. So now let me start with like the technical improvements that I got through um, the feedback. So this is this, I don't think it can be like overlooked how much important it is because now I have like 20 to 50 people who've read 
the, the, the preface and they've given me an incredibly qualified um, type of feedback. So there are many among like the, my readership who are like experts themselves in machine learning or audio processing. And so that type of feedback is just great because they can suggest you as domain experts certain things that you've just overlooked and you should cover or perhaps give you like ideas about how to structure your content in a way that's better. So let me give you an example here. So there was one beta reader who suggested that I unpack the preface and uh, keep like all the things that have to do like with the content, like the, the summary of what I'm gonna do, the, the type of readers that uh, this book is for in the preface, but then create a new chapter where I introduce uh, the, the big fields that I'm covering. So AI, machine learning, audio processing, and uh, AI audio. Before that, I packed some of that information in the preface, but this guy said, well, I think like it would be better like if you unpack that and you have only a chapter that's dedicated to this introductory thing. And so that way I restructured like my table of contents and now I think like it's stronger. So this is like a great example of like how like this type of like qualified content can help you a lot. But then there's also like these other parts to feedback, which is great by reading all the comments that people leave you you can really understand who's your readership and just understand their expectations what they want their beliefs and what they really need from your content and that is a key thing that you need to worry about if you want to create some great content and the the thing is like that you really need to know your audience to create great content. So this is something that uh, probably any content creator knows, but I feel when you start uh, a big project, like writing a book, this is something that can hit you like straight in your face. And it's really important to acknowledge and just like to, to, to buy it by like this thing, know your audience. So let me give you an example here. So I'm uh, working on this linear algebra chapter now. And as some of you guys may know, uh, part of my background is in physics. And so as a someone who studied physics, I really enjoy math quite a lot. But uh, because of that, so when I created the table of content for this um, a chapter in linear algebra, I was like very detailed and I put a lot of like topics in that because my idea was, okay, so I'm going to give you a very deep understanding of linear algebra. After a while, I got some feedback from machine learning experts and uh, a an academic who told me, yeah, this is all good, but I think this is a really too much you don't really need to introduce topics like vector bases or I don't know uh, linear combinations in order to understand most of the things that we use in deep learning and when I thought about that I initially I said yeah this is this <laughs> this sounds like a really uh, good advice and when I thought about it twice I realized yes so I was really biased because like I was projecting into the book and into the content of the book what I enjoyed the most and I wasn't really thinking uh, strategically about what was like best for the reader at that point. And the point being that the meat of the book is about AI audio. And so like people who pick up a book like the one that I'm writing are the most interested in AI audio. So everything that's around it, it's great and it's gonna prepare you but you should think that that is like ancillary content. It's not the main thing. And so you have to treat it in such a way. Taking on board this uh, suggestion, I just uh, restructured a little bit the chapter on linear algebra and I made it way leaner and way more uh, like operational. So there's way more theory there and it's way more geared towards, okay, so these are the tools that you're gonna be needing for these or that in audio processing or uh, machine learning, for example. Yeah, so as I said, knowing your audience probably is the main uh, 
piece of it, kind of like a uh, realization that I had like throughout like this couple of weeks, having like this initial feedback coming in. And um, along with that, um, it's important also to realize that different people are gonna have like different expectations for uh, like this book. And this is something that I realized by reading a lot of the feedback that I got. So there could be like someone who could say, yeah, I really think that you should talk about, I don't know, vector bases. And someone else would say, yeah, uh, I completely disagree with that. I don't think you should talk about that. Now, how should you, how should you proceed when you have like such like an issue? So like people that come, like who come to your book and have completely different ideas. So I thought about that because I got a lot of like this contrasting like suggestions or like feedback. And uh, the point is that you should be or driven by the uh, audience or reader archetypes that you have in your mind. In my case, I know that I have like people who come from uh, machine learning who are experts in that and who are more interested in the audio side. And there are also other people who come more from audio processing and who are interested in the AI side. And then I also have students who may have very little knowledge of most of these things. So my approach towards this is to set like a minimal kind of like a bar where I know that like everyone who has an understanding and who can program uh, quite fluently like in Python should be able to follow the book relatively easily, which basically means that I'm creating like all of the content for this type of person. So who's the kind of like weakest uh, person like in my readership now, for the people who are more experts, I'm gonna just like say, for example, when there's an introductory chapter, I'm gonna say, hi, so this, this is just like some introductory material. So if you already know about this, you can jump ahead and just go like to what you think like is, is best for you. And I think like this is very important uh, because you have to manage the expectations of your readers. And another thing like that I realized um, by getting like all of this feedback is that you can't please all of your readers. So you have to manage their expectations because readers are not like a unique block and they all think the same. Rather, they come from different backgrounds and definitely if they read a book as interdisciplinary as the one that I'm uh, writing, they will come from all over the place. And so you can't uh, just uh, tackle like all of their issues or create a content that's perfect for everyone. So you should focus like on your main readers and try to address that. So yeah, know your, your audience. Remember that you can't please uh, everyone and like be humble and take on board like as much feedback as you can because like that's the best way to improve like the quality of what you write and improve value for your readers in the end. Good, so these were some of the things that I had in bu buzzing in my mind uh, over the last couple of weeks. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and if that's the case, please subscribe and remember to hit the notification bell so you'll never miss a video and I'll see you next time. Cheers.